So what about how we put all those sounds together? Let's have a look at the mixer. And again, it's not massively complex. Got a few extra channels because I bust a few things together. But I'll show you some of the tricks to get it all to sound how it does. Uh, we'll look at the breaks first off. So if we select drums, as you can see that highlights pretty much everything. Even the Latin breakdown here goes into the drums bus. A little half loop here and half loop here. So we get a bit of everything. And we can see all the elements coming in there. So on the actual drums bus itself, and if you know me, I kind of work backwards. I'll put things into a bus, get the bus sounding good, and then tweak anything else that needs adjusting. Real simple, right? Roll off in the extreme low end, 22 hertz. I don't want anything below there. There was obviously something in there. Just needs to come out. Little bit of a roll off on the high end. Don't usually do that, but we, you know, in this instance, the, the, the shining of the brakes was obviously a bit much. So I've rolled off the high end a little bit, uh, right up here, like the 20 hertz range. And there's even a little shelf dip here, at sort of 6K. And then a little boost around 3K, just helping everything shine through. And I think the brake sounds good. After that, we've actually got this guy here, All right? This is doing something a little bit unique. It's compressing and expanding, and it would have been based on, yeah, it's the snare look. So it's always lifting up the snare, but at key moments, it's bringing it down. And it's got the scope to bring it negative by, what? Well, yeah, nearly 3 dB if it ever needed to. So I'm kind of using it like a dynamic EQ really. I've boosted up that particular area, but I didn't want it always to be high. It needs to pull down at key moments, which is why I've used that. For whatever reason, I've decided to use Pro MB instead of doing it in uh, Pro Q here and just making a dynamic band. That probably just worked best at the time. And you can see the job it's doing there. It's really simple. So it's lifting everything up, but at that moment where the snare's in, just pulls it back for a second. And that would have been a decision because I work on the bosses first and then go backwards. Today's breakdown is brought to you by DistroKid. They're my music distributor. They're the guys that got this track onto all of the major platforms. And they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you want to get your music out there in the same way, check the description below this video today for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution. So if we have a look at the break itself, it's a whole load of different samples and channels if we drop it all out. Um, we can see for the most part, there's not much going on. They're just samples in the quick sampler, but some of them have got things going on. So the snares here, for example, are EQ'd with you know, loads of the low end rolled out and a bit of this rolled out here. And what well, this one, for whatever reason, has got a little boost around here. But for the most part, they look the same-ish. Yeah, a bit more narrow on this one where I've got the boost. But yeah, for the most part, they are the same. The kicks are what's kind of special. Um, I've got R bass on them, or two R basses in some instances, and a little lift here. And those are done at frequencies that are key to the track. R bass will also be set to frequencies that are key to the track, meaning they always stay in tune. So if I turn all of this gaff off, those are the kicks, turn it all on. How much better do those kicks sound? And that's the purpose that those are there and that's the job they're doing. I've turned what's effectively quite a gash kick sound. Kaj goes put put. Basically tuned them to sound pretty spot on with the tune. If you don't hear a difference, I'm sorry. Snare sharp, well, it's pretty much self-explanatory, but again, loads of low end rolled out. We didn't need that. We wanted this and this. The rides here, let's just loop over them. Again, real simple EQ, quite a lot of lift. Look, uh, what's that going up? You know, four and a half dB, a good amount of lift right there. Um, and then a roll off, we didn't want that obviously in. Makes a big difference. The compressor absolutely slamming as well. But the reason it's absolutely slamming is because it works to lift everything up. Yeah, 
4 dB of gain, auto gain off, even though it's hammering a lot more than that. It sits right in the mix. It might not look right in terms of what it's doing, but I don't care as long as it sounds right. Um, in isolation. Yeah, you can hear that compressor going, grabbing those transients, right? That, it's taking loads out, loads. But it sounds right and sits right in the mix. So I don't care. In terms of the sample itself, probably wanted to add a bit of character to it. Gained it down to start off. Crazy EQ. Crazy, crazy, crazy EQ going on. Pulling out in key moments then, shaping it how I wanted it to be shaped. Dynamic wise, it's being controlled by like half a decibel, maximum of a decibel. Love this plugin, by the way. I've been using this for years, although it seldom shows up. It's just in moments like this, where you just want that really slow, gluey compression or something, just does the job right every time. Good tool. So here's where it starts to get a little bit voodoo-y and more special, right? So we've got Pro-Q3 again, uh, but it's taking out loads of bands in dynamic mode. As you can see, they are a conflict here with the vocal, okay? So I'm taking out anything here that would directly affect the vocal, and that allows the vocal to just sit on top and shine without these things getting in the way. So they're only being pulled back when the vocal is in there. When the vocal is not there, You can see there's no conflict, right? So at least those key fundamentals of the vocal just shine right through. Then the main section, I probably would have done something very similar with the overall vocal chain, uh, with the overall sample chain, sorry. Different EQ, just getting rid of the low end that I didn't need. Ah, pull tech, that makes sense. Uh, nice lift up here on the pull tech at what, 5K? Again, it'll be lifting like everything around that because it's a huge wide band. Similar thing going on with Pro Q, but pulling out much, much larger section here. Look. And again, it's so that this can just sit on top. see the vocals controlling that shape and pulling out of the sample when it's in so the vocals just got all the space it needs to sit there and shine uh, and then there's a little bit of glue on top of everything with a LA2A or the soft tube one um, like I said there's a whole separate video explaining how these sub buses work because it's kind of complex but they essentially sound like like this Make it to the end of this year. just pure weighty sub made from the original sample. Liver bass, there's a whole massive chain going on here. Amp bass compression, distortion, side chain compression, so the kick knocks it out of the way. Another EQ, just taking out the extreme lows, uh, and then CLA bass is even on there as well, just to give it some extra character and tone. If we take CLA bass off, it does change it a lot. I grits it up loads, even though there's barely any effects in. That helps it have its character that it's got. And I think the last like important thing to look at is the vocal chain, right? Which, oh my goodness, it's only two plugins. Um, there is a bus as well with a comp on, but yeah, it's literally dun dun dun. The one I always use, CLA vocals, because it just does a sick job. Juxtaposed in with this very simple little bump and cut from Pro Q. The main reason Pro Q's on here is to feed those other channels so that they have basically a profile of the vocal without the low end causing any issue. So I can cut away and make sure the vocal always sits in there. But uh, if we just disable them.
Um, there's one little bit of voodoo going on here. I've got my wide orcs, which is just purely sides. We make it to the end of this week. Gives us loads and loads and loads of space. It's got reverb as well for the vocal. So the vocal's got a lot going on, right? Shit, the rate we're going now would be lucky if we make it to the end of this week. Sounds sick though, right? And yeah, the wide aux is done. It's a reverb. This one does all of the hard work, the real ADT. Uh, that makes it a nice spread. The HEQ takes out the mid band of that and then it's compressed. Nothing special after that, really. Um, the bit that says vinyl, all the samples get fed into that and it's just giving a little bit of character. We've even got Ozone 9 on there, look, doing a little bit of harmonic distortion in the middle. So again, adding more character to these samples from what they originally were. In fact, just for fun and games, let's grab this sample here and we'll take everything off. And let's see just how much we actually changed it, shall we? Make it to the end of this year. I would say that changed a fair bit. Yeah, it's still the original rhythm, but the whole track's built upon that. Then when you add in the custom bass line as well, and the sub, it's definitely not close to what the original sample was, is it? So we've done lots of work to it, even though it doesn't look like it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is essentially a full breakdown of the track. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to listen to the full track, that will be linked below as always, distributed by DistroKid. 